Okay, I'm outside and it's uh, it's a whopping 20 degrees outside with a wind chill maybe down to 12 with got a little breeze going on and uh, yeah, maybe close to an inch of snow last night. Um, we're a few days after Christmas here and Santa Claus was nice enough to bring bicycles for the kids. So that leads me to my next project which I am not going to do outside. Since my garages are full and I'm not going to back my cars out in the, in the snow, I'm just going to go do a project in the sunroom where it's warmer than it is out here. Okay, the reason for this video is because not everybody out there knows how to assemble a bicycle and we got this bicycle for my son for Christmas and I'm going to uh, go about unboxing it and assembling it and show you what I do. Okay, first thing is the box is right on the outside of it. Do not cut. For this, I'm just gonna, it's, it's a smaller box. I'm just gonna rip it open and go from there. Okay. All right, this is what the box looks like. Open, so I'm gonna pull it out. Okay, to remove the bicycle, straight out. The rim is not attached like my other bicycle was. Okay. Handlebars are separate. Seat separate. Pedals separate. Both reflectors laying down the box. That's everything out of the box. So, move the box out of the way. And I have a larger piece of cardboard from where I put the other bike together. So I'll just put this on the floor for a second. All right. Okay, well, first, right out of the box, tire is completely flat. This tire, the front tire, has air in it, but it's really low. So we'll address that. Second thing is, pedals freely, but The forks here, I don't know if they have them extremely, extremely tight, but they were like not even wanting to move. You can hear like a crunching sound. And it shouldn't do that. So, after turning them for a little bit, the sound seems to have gone away and they move freely. So, the next thing I'm going to look at is <clears throat> the angle at which the forks are. No matter how I look at them, they seem to have the same kind of curve to them. They don't appear to have a forward rake to them like most bicycles do. So, I mean, it's not a very expensive bicycle. Um, so what I am going to do is I'm going to go with being able to read the word rally. So that's how I'm going to assemble the bike. So the next step would be I'm going to put the handlebars on. Now from the manufacturer uh, on the handlebars, they have a little bit of bubble wrap and some tape. Um, there's the, the headset nut. Okay, you're going to want to, it's a uh, 15 millimeter on this, the headset nut, you're going to want to loosen this. So that way you can rotate the neck.
position. Okay. Now, I've rotated it so the handlebars are more or less straight up and down. Okay. And you want the neck back in position in the center of the handlebars. I'm going to snug it up for now. Now, they put a plastic collar here, and I'm assuming same thing, 15 millimeter on the headset nut. You loosen it. So have that plastic collar holding that in place. That plastic collar, I guess from the factory they wedged it on there. So you just want to stick that with the wedge on the neck. You want that loose enough that you can get this down in your, your inside your neck. So I'm going to finger tight. Get it to an approximate position that I could see. It would be a good position for, you know, height off of the top of the neck here. So I'm going to tighten it up. All right, so it's basically snug pretty tight. All right, so the next thing, just check here, it's a different size nut here than the 15 millimeter. I want to put our seat on. Now on your seat is your instruction manual. I'm going to just, it's, it's put in here with a zip tie. I'm just going to cut the zip tie, put the manual aside. All right. The seat's got a plastic cover on it. I'm going to take the cover off. Like the um, from the factory, the cover is actually manufactured as part of the seat. They must punch the seat onto the fabric, uh, punch the metal frame on on here through the plastic here, because it's literally all through and under. All right, so the cover's off. All right, now we're going to slide the seat in. Make sure the height, all right, and here it is here. My, I could use, I could use a crescent wrench to do this, but I hate using crescent wrenches. Uh, I just, you know, chance of marking or slipping or whatever to scratch the paint, so I'd much rather use a socket and a ratchet. And on here, this is a 13 millimeter, so it's, it's 15 millimeter for the neck bolts. And it's uh, to tighten up the seat here. It's a 13 millimeter. So my son's not real tall. So I'm gonna just tighten this up. Approximate height, I'll have to readjust it when he's around. He's in the house right now. Make sure when you put your seat in that it's straight in line with the frame. There we go. And you want to put your reflector. It can only go one way. It should only go one way. So get on your seat post here. Now on your seat post, you can see it's kind of angled. So once it's in here, you know, the light will reflect off of it that direction. So you put your seat at the height you need to put it. And like I said, adjust it to your child. Tighten your seat up. All right, that's it. Now the seat's on, okay, and the handlebars are on. And they put this plastic thing in here to keep it from 
uh, punching holes through the cardboard box and you know possibly to keep from marking up your floor in your house that's why I use a piece of cardboard whether it's a cardboard from something else or the actual box when you got the bicycle you use the cardboard to protect it the handlebars the seat from whatever surface you're working on so the next thing to do is just remove that plastic piece okay and then you're going to get your tire and if you're like me and you like things to be the same um, you could always compare the tread pattern to see if it's in the same position because not always the tread pattern is the same you know yeah so tread patterns going a specific direction take a wheel protect the uh, this is to protect from punching holes in the box and this one here up against the frame Oi. you really hook that thing on there <sighs> okay so there's a uh, it's hard to see with black but there's a hook that goes in this eyelet here on the front forks this this piece was in between the frame to protect the frame from getting scratched up but it was caught on that little hook and that's why I was trying to pull it off so grab your little display thingy here and just curl it out from the tire all right get your tire direction if you want I mean the, the rims identical whether you Turn it side to side. The only reason I'm just comparing, I'm comparing with the rear tire just to see that it's going the same direction. Now, loosen your nuts on the axle. Move those little hooks. Go a little closer to the camera here. These little hooks. I'm just going to take them. Okay, a little bit closer to the view of the front end here. There's the eyelet there that that, that hook gets hooked into. So you'll spin your nuts out pretty far. Slide those, slide those hooks out so that way you can get your axle in. Once your axle's in, spin them around, hook your hook in, spin your nut on. Same thing on the other side. You're hooked in now those I'm assuming those are designed so you can't have your front wheel fall off but I would think if you're if you're not loosen up to the point where uh, I can't even take the nut back off if you're not loosen up to the point where that hook was needed I would think that that hook is gonna fall out anyway and your wheels gonna fall off so that's my only guess why they're there so just put them in, put them on place exactly how they're supposed to be, and tighten up your front axle. Get them nice and tight. I would assume like 50 pounds of force is enough. doesn't say on your crank set here but it says on your pedals the side of the, the pedals the side of the cranks that have the sprocket is your right side and the side of the pedals that doesn't have the sprocket is your left side so on your packaging you got right and you got left and it shows you the direction of rotation on the sticker that you're supposed to turn the turn the nut to crank the pedals tight to install them. so here I'm just going to open the package heat shrink packaging you can see the left and right stickers so now if you look at the sticker it shows you the direction of rotation that you have to turn this okay so you're going to want to turn this counterclockwise to install turn the bike here a little bit
okay? They have lubrication. You can see it on my fingers. There's oil on these, I guess, to preserve, to keep it from rusting. Same thing here, you can use your crescent wrench. This actually has the room. Um, it recommends a crescent wrench. And the reason I don't usually use the crescent wrench is because a box wrench, an open end wrench, is actually narrower and you have more space to, to crank the pedal. So these pedals are 15 millimeter to install. So you go about installing the pedals here. Okay, now when you get to the point of getting tight on the pedal here, now you're gonna, if you're, if you're cranking with the direction of the pedal, you're gonna wanna take and actually crank on it like this where, you know, you're not out here, you're not out with the, the pedal where you're actually bringing the arm like the leverage. You wanna crank against it like this. So that way you can tighten that. Okay, so that's one. Now we'll do the other side. All right, now on this one, the rotation, direction rotation is clockwise. So now we're gonna just take and install the pedal, thread it in clockwise. Same thing, tighten the pedal, don't be out here trying to tighten it, bring yourself to the inside so you're, you're leveraging against the arm and you can get it nice and tight. Okay, so now the pedals are on, it's nice and tight. So we're near and done, I'm gonna do a couple checks on this, but one of the first things I wanna do is put air in the tires because it's completely flat and has a little bit of air. Put air in the tires here but real quick um one thing you want to make sure is that the tire is not more one way on the rim than the other so as you put air in it you don't want to have it like twisted or or high one way or or something like that or, or deeper down in the rim you want it pretty even on the rim so just uh get your pump this tire is like completely flat so I'm going to pinch the tire to hold the valve stem down. And you want your valve stem straight down. You don't want it angled one way or the other because that will eventually cut into the valve stem and give you a flat tire. So you want it perfectly straight. And like I said, give it a pinch to hold it down so that way you can get your, your tire valve on it. As I put a little air in it, I just want to make sure it appears like it's it's centered on the rim. You know, if, if I'm if I had the bike the other way and I was filling these tires, it would put pressure on the tire, which would push it further into the rim. So when you would put air in the tires, it would develop a wobble. Like as the tires going around, it would wobble this way. So it would make for a rougher ride for when you're riding a bicycle. So you just want to put. These tires recommend 35 PSI. I think that's max. My kids are pretty light, so I don't think I'm gonna go 35. Even 20, I'm at 20 pounds. I'll give it 25. If I'm gonna let all the air out. <laughs> Alright, there's 25 pounds, two hands. Pull the valve stem off, pull it off the uh, valve stem, and put the cap on. Pull it back to the second tire. 
Same thing here. Hold the valve stem kind of straight. Pinch it so you can get it on if you have to. The tire is really that flat. So that's what I got. 25. That feels good. All right. Air pump out of the way. You can now I'm done assembling. You pull the last of this paint protector off. Flip the bike over. It's ready to go. <clears throat> So, I've been on my knees too long. Now, you want to make sure, let's see, when your son or daughter sits on the seat, you want to make sure they sit on the seat and their feet can touch the ground. Touch the ground or even their feet flat on the ground. Second thing is, is handlebars. I snugged it up. You want to make sure after we're done this that the handlebars are tight. Both here. I'm going to loosen it for a second. You want okay. I'm putting them more or less straight up and down. You want to adjust it for a comfortable reach. You want to make sure they're not reaching out. You want them at a comfortable ride position for their arms. So on this more or less, their their arm position and the handlebars are more or less straight up and down. Okay, so the last thing to put on to complete this bike project is the front reflector. Now to put it on, you gotta take the screw out and flex this out enough to slip it over the handlebar. Phillips head screwdriver, loosen it up. Don't lose a screw and it can go on either side of the handlebar so all right once you've got that in place just tighten it up with your Phillips head screw that's it that's pretty much it um, I hope this helps you out in assembling a bicycle this would be a much shorter job. It, it really doesn't take long, five, 10, 15 minutes to assemble this bike. Um, it takes me longer because I'm doing a video. You know, and the purpose for this video is, is not every bike comes assembled. Not everybody knows how to assemble them. Uh, you know, and if you go to Toys R Us, and that's where, <clears throat> that's where this is from. It's a Toys R Us bike uh, ordered off the internet. Um, it, it's, uh, if you go in the store and you buy it, this bike in the store, I think they charge you $15 or $20, I think it's $15 to assemble them. So I, I've actually had to uh, basically argue with them in the store, like, you know, I want to assemble, I want the bike in a box so I can give it to them. And, and uh, they're like, we, we assemble all our bikes. I'm like, what? When I, working on the bicycle, it's pretty simple to put together, you know, 15 millimeter on the headset, 15 millimeter on the headset, 15 millimeter on the axle, 15 millimeter on the on the pedals, and it was uh, 13 millimeter for the seat post. Uh, it's a pretty simple, straightforward, easy to put together. You know, I, hopefully this video helped you out getting this bike put together. It's not a difficult task, but not everybody can do this. You know, it, it, believe it or not. So the only thing negative about the bike is. I let it sit overnight before I came back out here and I noticed that the rear tire is flat again. So coming from Toys R Us, there's a hole in the tube in the rear. It happens, you know. Uh, don't be surprised if there's something wrong or something missing. It's, it's happened before. 
and it's just one of those things you have to call and complain or file, you know, send an email or whatever. Um, so I hope this video helps you out. Like, share, and subscribe because you never know what I'm going to do next.